Hey guys, I'm back again with another video talking about Dark Dimension 4 planning and how exactly I plan on finishing it. Uh, as you may know, following the stream, I've gotten up through the global nodes and finished node 6, and now I'm at the gear crunch for uh, waiting on the doorstep of the cosmic nodes. Um, kind of got my teams mapped out, but something I've been wanting to do, and I just hadn't found the time, but I did it tonight. I collected a whole bunch of info from the Tahiti Discord server, which is just a community Discord. Uh, there are quite a few alliances over there, uh, but if you want to get there, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's another community within MSF. Uh, you're welcome to join and hang out and talk about whatever. They have a lots and lots of channels and all sorts of topics and one of them that I find very interesting I haven't really seen this anywhere else and I may just be blind to it if it is elsewhere but they have a DD4 tracking uh, channel just for progress and what it is and I participated in this as well is you're supposed to put your teams that you used and show how far you've gotten through each of the nodes how many attacks it took uh, both your first run and your timed run and it's really interesting because when you start looking at it from a, a big picture perspective of trying to figure out okay well who is doing well who is doing efficient uh, attacks and you know getting through at a relatively good pace and I came up with this sheet so I picked out I think it's uh, let's see how many people is this this is uh, 12 people that have either partially or completed uh, Dark Dimension 4 on their first run. Uh, you can see all the names at the top here. You may recognize some of these folks. Uh, I'm sure you know Yeti. He's a, he's also a content creator. Philosopher, who is the fourth completion of uh, Dark Dimension 4. He's also a very low-powered account, but uh, as you'll see here when we dig into his stats and stuff, we can talk about how he did it and uh, what it may have cost him. <laughs> and uh, there's only a few others that have finished here so far, so Rain Pro and Glum have also finished. And then there's a few more that are stuck in City. Uh, but what I really wanted to look at is the nodes that require trait-specific characters. And the first three nodes Notes. Everybody's getting through these relatively quickly. Um, there's only one person that spent more than you know four attacks on any of the first three nodes. So whatever you bring as your first five, assuming they're good for other types of nodes, then it's probably not going to matter, right? But so if we look at global, global is a pretty easy one to dissect here. What I've done is I've tried to uh, abbreviate the teams that they brought and highlight a couple of the, te of the oddball characters that uh, you know weren't quite as popular and then try to make some sense of how many attacks they spent on each one of these nodes and figuring out, well, you know, is it really worth it to save, you know, 18 G15 minis here and there uh, if I have to spend an enormous amount of tax getting through those nodes. So if we look at global here going across, you know, nodes 4, 5, and 6, um, I highlighted everybody that's in eight or more attacks in yellow and anybody that's 14 or more attacks in red. Um, so that's for a specific node. Um, collectively, they may spend, you know, much more than 14 attacks on the three nodes of that type, but that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at individual nodes and how long they get stuck on them. Um, most of them you can see here for global, uh, everybody pretty much brought sinister except for one person, I think. And, um, yeah, Sinister was the most popular character, and then so is Ghost. Uh, both of them were very, very popular. Um, only a couple people brought Emma. But the thing I want to point out here is a lot of people did what I did, uh, which was Sinister, Ghost, Black Widow, and Sabretooth. And the reason why is because all four of those characters are really good value. They have value elsewhere in the game, or they're cheap. Um, so Sabretooth I don't think has a lot of value elsewhere in the game, but he's very cheap. He's only one gear 15 piece, so that's, you know, 18 G15 mini uniques for mutants and you're done. Sinister is three, I believe, whereas Emma is four. And so to me, they're both going to G15 at some point. I'm just going to hold off on Emma until after my first DD4 run. Uh, she'll probably be the very first character I upgrade to G15 once I'm done with uh, DD4. But you can see here, Sinister is just the absolute best character here uh, across the board for Global, and nobody except for one person spent a whole lot of time and effort on these nodes, 
and you know that guy was in the race too so he may have been keeping attacks that weren't that great but got him further and maybe that added up over time to where he had to do a whole lot of attacks to get through that node in particular um but most everybody was bringing sinister a lot of people brought ghost um one guy brought yelena who i know is relatively cheap um but you can see here uh the yelena instead of like black widow is commonly in this uh, skill slot for global uh, one attack, two attacks, and seven attacks. I mean, that's ten attacks total. Um, so really, it's like a week to get through that global. Uh, it's it's seven refreshes essentially. So you know, you get one free attack on each node because the first time you get there, you can attack. Um, but you know, that's that's really not bad. Um, you know, if it takes him seven or ten attacks and takes this guy nine, and he took you know Sabretooth and Black Widow instead of Yelena and Sabretooth. I mean, was is it really that big of a difference? At that point, you might as well choose which character you think is more useful to you, right? Widow or uh, Yelena. Now, the only thing I will say here is that I've seen a lot of people taking Zemo, and you know, some of them worked out. Like this guy was able to do it in seven total attacks to finish global, whereas this one took twenty. Um, you know, it, and it may be, you know, there's a lot of variables here. It could be red stars, yellow stars, uh, you know, just skill of the player and also the uh, time and effort, right? So I know I made some stupid attacks on my run because I was just like out of time and I had to finish an attack for the end of the day because of the reset. So I kept a couple of attacks that I wouldn't have normally and that's fine. It brings up the number slightly for me, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. So. You know, because this isn't really a race against the clock. You know, the race is over. Race was done weeks ago. Yags won. Uh, or I'm sorry, Scopely Fixed Prices won. Congratulations, good sir. Uh, we all cheers to you. Uh, can't wait for those 100 shards. Hopefully they'll be here by November. Uh, I guess we'll see what happens with that. But to think about this, I mean, you know, it, none of these are really all that bad of attacks. Really where I'm seeing the most value uh, for picking the right characters is in Cosmic. And let's look at that. Um, just suffice to say on uh, Global, it really doesn't matter whether you take Emma or Captain America or Hawkeye even. Some guy had Hawkeye and did 155, so 11 attacks total. Not a big deal. And then there's uh, Zemos and all that. So I would really think that the most efficient and useful group of characters that you can take is Sinister, Ghost, Black Widow, and Sabretooth and get through it in a reasonable amount of time. You're not going to one-shot everything, right? I don't think anybody did here, uh, except for the guy who brought Emma. But who cares? Like, why, why would you need to one-shot all these notes? Unless you have all your stuff ready for Cosmic and City and maybe even Legendary, you're going to be sitting around somewhere for a while. So you might as well slow play it, take your time, and uh, get through the notes uh, with, with, some, with some extra time. So... Cosmic notes, though, I thought this was really interesting. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the the team that I'm planning on taking at this point now is Thanos, Proxima, Hela, and Minerva, and that's what this team is right here. So these are the abbreviations: TH for Thanos, PX for Proxima, H for Hela, and M Min for Minerva, right? And Glom was able to do it in two five and nine attacks. Uh, Murph was able to do it in two four four. Uh, here's another one that's the same team four five six, right? That's not bad. That's you know ten to fifteen attacks. Uh, you know that's 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 fine. Like it's totally reasonable. And you can see those are these are some of the best attacks. Yeti, Rain Pro. Look at these uh, four five three three four one. I mean those are those are quick quick finishes and getting through it and and not spending all day on it. One thing I do want to highlight here is Longshot and Shatterstar. Uh, this guy, Tenacious JDD, did bring both of them. And look at that. They, he was able to do it 3-2-5, right? So Hela, Minerva, Longshot, and Shatterstar. Uh, that's a great combo. I, I, I can't wait to take Shatterstar and Longshot the year 15 because uh, they're going to just wreck, wreck everything in, in sight. Uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm looking forward to that uh, once I'm done with DD4. But this is, this is an interesting team. And if this is actually accurate and, uh, you know, he was able to finish this node nine and uh, five attacks like that, that's awesome. Like, that's a, that's a fantastic uh, run. But when we move over to the right here, you can see all this red and yellow. And when we start dissecting those teams, we're going to see something here, right? So Yeti was very oh, very um, successful using Thor, who's not a very popular character, right? Three, five, four attacks using Hela, 
Proxima, Minerva, and Thor instead of Thanos, who's commonly in this slot, uh, that's something to think about, right? His Thor, I think, was six or seven red stars, though, so that does help a bit, especially keeping him alive. Um, and I think he had a pretty beefy team. But this is this is interesting, right? Whereas other people who took Thor, like this guy did Thanos, Proxima, uh, Minerva, and Thor, he, he did 12 attacks on the first node, and then 18 on the second, and he's not even done with the third. Um, that's 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 uh, that means it's going to take a while, right? Uh, Gekka here... Um, did Thanos, Proxima, Minerva, and Mordo, and he took 10 attacks on the first uh, first uh, node, 13, and then 27. So for a total of 40 attacks, right? So that's 37 refreshes or 37 days of free resets to get through all that. That is a long, long, long time. Now, if you're not in a hurry to get to City or Legendary because you have so long to go for gear, maybe that's fine. But I personally, I don't want to spend all this time and effort on these nodes doing this every single night for you know five weeks straight <laughs> and so uh to me you know yeah you brought mordo and you know he's like a what uh, a 54 54 or something like that character for uh mini uniques right well you know if you just held off for nerve minerva or not minerva uh hella you know your life would have been way shorter right you'd be more in like this 10 attack range instead of 40. you know is that month of time worth it to you to spend beating your head against the wall on these nodes or would you rather just save it and put it in a better character and get a lot farther faster uh, but not spend as much time in there to me that's kind of the balance here it's not so much about how long is it going to take me to finish which is what everybody keeps talking about in videos and stuff is just like oh man like it's gonna take me you know four months to finish like i don't really care about the journey of how long it takes i want to know Am I going to have to spend every single night in there, you know, 20, 30 minutes trying to get the right attacks and RNG and all that stuff, at least uh, spending that much time to get somewhere and finish it off, right? So to uh, to me, I, I don't want to do that, right? I'd rather wait and get another ex extra 18, you know, mini uniques of that type and get a Hela that's going to help me tremendously versus just going in with Thor and getting started or taking a paper thin Doctor Strange who's going to die in like two shots anyway. Um, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But the other thing that we also need to really point out here, because I've seen some infographics recommending this, but look at this. Thanos, Minerva, Mordo, and Longshot did 9, 6, and 18 attacks, right? So that's 33 total, all right? That's 30 days. That's a month of being in Cosmic and doing resets every night, right? Uh, another one that did uh, Longshot and Thor. Oof, man, this is a cautionary tale right here. Thanos, Proxima, Longshot, and Thor. 12, 28, and 54 attacks yikes uh that is an enormous amount of time to spend on a couple of nodes right uh i'm sure he probably didn't want to use his gear on minerva for whatever reason and didn't bring her uh, but you can see here that is a costly mistake that is a significant amount of time that you have to spend there and then the other one is philosopher and i know he was racing so i don't know if these numbers are are wholly accurate because he was trying to get through as fast as he could uh, he may have just been doing extra revives with cores and stuff and not worrying too much about how effective his attacks were and trying to get the most out of them he may have been just doing well and taking it and then going forward again uh, but 9 15 and 35 attacks using thanos minerva proxima and long shot um, you know while that may seem like a bit of an outlier we can see other ones uh, like that and know that that's pretty accurate as far as the time it'll take to get through without um, a hella right so we know that in dd3 uh Hella was amazing, right? Greg is awesome. Greg is MVP of, of, of DD3, right? Like, uh, when I was doing Cosmic Nodes with her in DD3, it was incredibly useful. So, the suffice to say is, you really need to make a decision of not so much, like, when are you going to finish, but more of, like, how long is it going to take you to, from start to finish of some of these nodes and these sets? Because if you pick the wrong characters... You're going to eventually get through, but you're going to be beating your head against the wall every night for a month plus, right? And to me, that's not worth the time and effort. I don't want to do that. Um, you know, I, I'd rather just wait out and get better characters and get through it efficiently than trying to, you know, 
barge my way through using characters that you know just try to hit things with a hammer and don't do much else right <laughs> so this is just i wanted to point this out so long shot's not bad as a choice if you can bring shatter star for sure i think we can see that here and i think we all know that that's how it works right those two characters are amazing uh they're going to be awesome for cosmic um, stuff in the future and also here uh, last part is we don't have a ton of information on Legendary and City. Uh, a lot of people are just in the first couple of nodes of City and appears to, you know, be pretty simple. Uh, literally everybody that has started City on this group has Symbiote Spider-Man and uh, most of them have Anti-Venom anti as well. Uh, a lot of them brought Scream, so there's a few Symbiotes with a lot of synergy. And then as a fourth, the variety of things are Punisher, Merc LT, and uh, one person brought a Carnage, which I thought was interesting. Um, but that's about it, right? There's not a whole lot of great choices for City right now. They're good, though. The ones that are at the top, Symbiote Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, and Scream. That's an awesome trio, but it's all your bio gear. So that's why I very much caution people against using Black Bolt, Captain America, uh, Captain Marvel, characters like that that waste bio gear elsewhere. Um, don't do it because you're going to need it for City. I think everybody knows that by now, or at least if you've been watching and preparing, you should know that by now. <laughs> but people with uh, but my team that I'm planning on doing is Symbiote Spider-Man, AV, um, Scream, and Punisher. Uh, 1, 2, and 11 attacks, so that's, you know, 14 attacks total, and so that's 11 days. That's not bad. Um, other people, you know, here's the same thing again, 1, 1, 19, so that's a few more attacks on the last node. So the last node is going to be trouble. Um, there's a lot of nasty characters on it. This one did MLT and Carnage instead of... Um, instead of uh, Punisher, right, So and uh, and AV. So uh, 1, 2, 18, that's almost the same. Um, so really not much difference in their progress. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of people here that are on that last node and haven't completed it yet. But you can see the first two nodes there are really simple uh, if you got Symbiote Spider-Man and uh, Scream at least. So uh, last bit is the Legendary. So the only real difference I saw here, everybody's using Maw, uh, Doc Ock and Invisible Woman for the most part. Um, three of them used Phoenix. One of them, Yeti, used Fury, uh, which I thought was really interesting because if you look at the numbers, like, um, you know, 1, 3, 10 is 14, uh, 8, 7, uh, 3 is uh, 18, uh, 9, 10, this is 15 attacks, and then this one's 17. So actually, the fastest clear was done by Glum, which was 14 attacks, or minimum number of attacks, whereas Fury, instead of Phoenix, uh, still got the job done in uh, 15 attacks, right? So they were doing about as good or better with Fury instead of Phoenix. So Phoenix isn't actually a requirement if you can get Fury instead. So if you're not spending a whole lot of uh, uh, skill gear uh, early on, you know, like he did uh, Widow and Proxima as his two skill characters and then brought MLT for uh, his city, not Punisher. Maybe you can get away with that instead of having to spend all your mutant gear on uh, Phoenix later, right? You can do, you know, Sinister, Sabretooth, maybe get a Shatterstar Longshot combo, something like that, um, and skip Phoenix from uh, G15. Just a thought. I thought I'd point that out because I think it's interesting. Um, we haven't seen a whole lot of variety in the legendary category from what, I, uh, from what I've noticed, at least. And... Um, it's good to know that uh, there are alternatives that can be viable, and it really comes down to just what kind of gear drops do you get, right? Because there's a lot of orbs that drop gear, and uh, you can only buy so much from the war store to kind of even out your supplies. But uh, yeah, there's 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 a little bit of wiggle room there, which I'm I'm surprised by. I thought Phoenix would be very very important for that node, <laughs> and uh, or set of nodes, and uh, she's not a required character, I guess. So. That's uh, that's good to know, but this is this is the kind of high level view of what people have done so far as far as completing DD4, and uh, I just think it's really interesting to see. Uh, I'm happy that they're you know go taking the effort, making a channel specifically for gathering this information, and you know also glad that so many people are willing to volunteer it. Right? Some people um, you know might not want to show that they spent 54 attacks on Node 9, but uh, you know, Captain Underdog, thanks, man. It's good to know. Um, 
thank you for paving the way for Longshot and Thor and giving us the example uh, that we all were wondering about. And uh, I think it's pretty much a resounding no <laughs> on that recommendation. 94 attacks in Cosmic with that team, and uh, that's that's rough. Uh, it's really rough. I feel bad for him. That's that's gotta hurt. Um, but that's that's just the way it goes. So uh, if you make poor decisions on your characters, then you're gonna have to live with it for a while. So keep that in mind. Um, last bit, just to show where I am as far as my farming and inventory goes. I'm using the uh, roster organizer thing. Uh, I'm not gonna do long shot anymore for G15. I'm gonna do Hella and just wait out the Mystic gear. Um, and then I'll do Scream, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Punisher, Anti-Venom uh, for City. And then I'm planning on doing Ebony Mod, Ock, and Phoenix, and Invisible Woman, right? So when it adds all that up and I've got those all turned on, um, you can see here I need another, you know, bunch of molecules, isomers. I need a lot of mini uniques across the board. Not a whole lot of mutant that I need left because I'm not doing long shot or shatter star. Um, so I can stop buying those and uh, focus more on getting as catalysts and uh, whatever else I need as far as the upgrade materials go. So this, this Groot roster organizer thing from Zara Tools is really helpful. Uh, I really enjoy using it for uh, inventory management and character management. Uh, just kind of get an overview of everything as well. Um, it's it's you know it works with the roster extractor um, and and. It's the same thing I use to update msf.gg so my alliance can see all of my characters' information. Uh, it's just pretty neat to have it all in one place and be able to play around with it and build your own formulas and look at different stuff. So you can see here, I need to buy a whole lot more SBCs, damage catalysts, and uh, focus catalysts. And those are really why I should be farming from now on. So uh, I don't need any more health catalysts. That's nice. And of course, don't need armor. And I've got just enough resistance ones too. So that's pretty cool. The last thing I need to look at is making sure I get enough miasma. And then the rest of it's going to be mostly uh, mini uniques, which will come with time, uh, you know, through RT. TA rewards and other things and random events but this is just where I'm at that's that's my plan um, right now I'm really not focused on legendary so I can take all that off and then look at the inventory and see oh okay well if we remove all that then these numbers go down considerably right and then I can also turn off you know anti-venom puncher and uh, scream and symbiote for now because I'm just trying to get into cosmic let the numbers rerun and update and it's like okay Well, that's doable, right? Uh, I need to focus on getting a whole bunch more mystic gear for Hella. I need to focus on getting a bit more tech gear for uh, Minerva and then uh, The catalyst will come in time as I'm getting those and so I'll definitely uh, Keep that in mind and then I just need a little bit more miasma um, for I'm guessing Hella and then one of these other ones must use it too. Hmm. That's very odd. But anyway, I do have a G14 uh, Hella from BD3, so and she's six red stars, so it should be relatively easy to get her up to uh, G15 once we get the minis. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. But it'll be a few weeks until I can start Cosmic, and when I do, I will be certain to stream it and show as much as I can try to work through those nodes my, my, to the best of my abilities and document it in the DD4 guide. Um, the DD4 guide is also linked in the description below, so if you need that, uh, it is just a tab in my resource sheet over here. Uh, I added one for this results thing, but that's just progress. I should probably change the name of it. But the DD4 waveguide is available for anybody that would like to use it. Uh, it's got some, uh, most of the nodes are, uh, at least some of the drop orders are, are done. Um, not a lot of the strategies done yet because I haven't gotten to them, but uh, it is available. If anybody would like to use it, uh, feel free to go to the link, uh, or you can do tiny.cc slash dd4 dd4, and uh, that'll take you directly to it. You can make a copy of this for yourself or just access it how you, how you like here and uh, scroll through it as you need to to find the notes that you want and get some notes and helpful tips from, from Dutch. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, Check out my Discord. Uh, there is a Ask Dutch section in there. So if you have any questions that are burning on your mind, just ask me in there, at me. And then if anybody else wants to chat or see what other questions you may have as follow-up, uh, feel free to toss them in there and uh, we'll get the conversation going. So uh, just let me know. Anyway, y'all have a good night. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.